So in this video, we're going to look at a demo of what Dominet can actually do to packets. On the left here, I have a test host whose packets being fed through Dominet. This Ethernet address is here, and this is how I'm matching the packets. This machine is configured as a Dominet bridge. And if we look at the uh, Dominet rules, they're as described in a previous video on a Dominet setup. And we're matching these packets by MAC address. So let's start up a ping. Um, this is actually out to the uh, real internet. This uh, doing it boxes between the test host and the real internet. And we're going to uh, watch and see what happens. So first, let's have a look at IPFW show. This shows some statistics. This column here shows the number of packets matched by each IPFW rule. And this is the number of bytes matched by each. And you can see here the rules for macking, matching my machine with its MAC address. Now if we run this command over time, you can gradually see the numbers increasing, so keep an eye on these guys. Uh, these are increasing as the packets from the test host go back and forth across the dummy net box. We can zero all these counters if we want to uh, go back and check and see how many packets gone through. Now they've all gone back to 2. 168 bytes, which is 2 pings worth. Now we can also have a look at the pipes with IPFW Pipe Show. We have four pipes configured, 0, 1, or 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the configuration of the pipes you can see, 900 megabits for the first two, two pipes, 0 milliseconds delay, and large queues of 7,500 packets. Um, some other statistics are provided, including the total number of packets, total number of bytes that went through the uh, pipe, the amount of data queued, and the number of packets dropped. IPFW Pipe 0 also resets all these counters, so that if you want to uh, uh, zero them and have a look, you can do that. So now let's change the configuration of Pipe 3 so we can see what's happening. We'll leave it configured at 1 megabits. Um, actually, mistyped, but Dominette is quite forgiving. Uh, we're going to increase the delay to 10 milliseconds because previously it was only 2. If you notice, the delay from the pings instantly increases by about 10 milliseconds. Pipe 4, let's do the same thing. 1 megabit still, but add a delay of an extra 10 milliseconds in the other direction. And this time our ping round trip times increase by another 10 milliseconds as expected. At this stage, uh, we can reload the original rules, which are in etc. ipfw.conf, and restore the uh, settings to their default, and the delays drop back down again. And let's have a look at a slightly more complicated network example, where instead of using pings, we'll use uh, FTP to transfer a file. So these uh, files will be transferred over uh, TCP. Here I'm going to fetch the file just on the command line and we'll put it in Devnor because we don't really want a copy of it. So when we run this we find that we get a transfer of about 66 kilobytes per second. Now that's actually quite a lot less than the one megabit specified in the rules, so where is that extra bandwidth content? Well the answer is that two packets is too small for TCP to really uh, operate properly. Um, two packet buffers are just not sufficient. So let's leave the bandwidth the same as it was before. Now the delay was down at 10, we'll actually increase the delay slightly here and we're going to set the packet to, or the packet buffers to be 20 packets long instead of 10. So we'll do that for pipe 3 and pipe 4 which are the uh, two pipes the test host is subject to. Now we can see that the uh, throughput has improved considerably, it's almost gone up to twice which is about the right amount for a 1 megabit pipe. Of course, there are certain overheads that you can't get away from. Now let's make the bandwidth much bigger, so we should be able to uh, transfer files considerably faster now. So we can change the configuration of pipe 3 and pipe 4. Now there will be a certain amount of data cached, so I'm going to get the uh, file a couple of times, and what we find is the bandwidth has increased considerably. Now we're probably running into either queue problems again or socket limitations. 